All right, let's take a look at uh, day two. So rounds two and three of the NFL draft. What do you think the Browns need to try to get done day two? So uh, rounds two and three of this upcoming draft. Well, I think day two could be a prime spot to get yourself another edge rusher as a num- as either a number two th- number two guy if j- you don't bring back Jadavion Clowney or a three, even if you do, because Tack McKinley has the torn Achilles, so you're really not going to see a lot from him, re- if at all, in 2022. And I look at this class, you know, doing my initial look into things, this is a pretty deep edge class, class going into day two. I look at guys like Drake Jackson from USC, my Jay Sanders from Cincinnati, Kingsley Anigbare of South Carolina, for example, Josh Pascal from Kentucky. Those are day two guys at edge rusher that really stick out. Defensive tackle, same thing. There's there's guys I like there. Fedarian Mathis from Alabama, Perry and Winfrey from Oklahoma. If they can get a guy to fill one of those two positions, whether you're looking for a third edge rusher or a potential starting defensive tackle, I think that's the way to go. And I've been torn on this other idea. It's kind of it seems a little sinister and I don't know just kind of how this would work, but the idea of double dipping at the receiver position, because I feel like in the consensus on the internet is the Browns should go receiver in the first round. So what do you do after that? You take another one again, because you look in the second round, there's going to be good ones there as well. I talked about those top five guys behind them. You got guys like Jahan Dotson from Penn state, John Mechie from Alabama, George Pickens from Georgia, Um, David Bell from Purdue, so many good receivers. And I talked about just how vital that position could be and just how much of an injection of talent they could get at that position and the way the NFL is transforming to a passing game. Why not double dip? Why not just completely turn that position of weakness into a position of strength and dive headfirst into a very deep receiver class and just use your two first two picks on them? I, I don't know if they would do that. But it would be very fascinating to say come out of the draft with Garrett Wilson and David Bell. All of a sudden, you've got a remade receiving core, especially if you pair that with a top-notch free agent. Then you leave Baker Mayfield or whoever's a quarterback with no excuses. Well, the other thing is it sounds like um, if, if defensive tackle, edge rusher are both deep as well as wide receiver, at least the Browns' needs... Um, Those are three areas that I don't think many people would argue are areas of need. At least this draft is deep in in those three positions, which that's good news for Andrew Barry and and the guys that have to remake this roster. You know, question, I think I think receiver and edge rusher are much deeper than defensive tackle. D tackle is kind of one of the weaker areas. So if they were going to prioritize one of those three positions in the second round, maybe it's defensive tackle. And then you address edge rusher and receiver, you know, potentially in round three or early in day three. But I do think depth at those two positions should be key along with, you know, the obligatory draft and offensive linemen every year philosophy that I believe in.